Well, I am just back from sailing on my very first Norwegian cruise on board the Norwegian Encore. And in this video, I'm gonna walk you through every meal I had on board the ship as I review all of the food on board the Norwegian Encore. Hello everyone, my name is Zach. I am the Traveling Man. And while I was on board the Encore, I ate just about everywhere that was available on board the ship. Of course, Norwegian Cruise Line is famous for their freestyle dining, and I took full advantage. I ate at five specialty dining venues. I ate in the main dining rooms. I ate at the buffet. I ate in the observation lounge. So in this video, I'm going to walk you through all of those meals, all of the food I had. I've got video clips and pictures, and I've got my honest review about how I felt about everything I had on board the ship. And there's a lot of food to cover, so I'm just going to jump right into it. We're going to start with day one upon boarding the ship. I couldn't wait to go to the local. Now, the local, if you're not familiar, is a 24-hour eatery that Norwegian has on board a lot of their ships. And that's just unheard of on board cruise ships. Other than pizza or room service, you just normally don't find 24-hour food on board a cruise ship. But they had it on Norwegian Encore, and I was very excited to try the local. I had seen a lot online about the local and had looked at that menu for like hours before the cruise, just like, ooh, I don't want to get this day. What do I want to get that day? I knew it was open for breakfast. Uh, during the breakfast hours, they do have breakfast offerings, but lunch, dinner, and overnight hours, they have wings and burgers and salads and soups and fish and chips and lechon and all sorts of things. It was a wide menu there. So the very first day of the cruise, embarkation day, that was the first place I hit up. I went to the local. The cool thing about the local is that it is a table service restaurant. So in addition to being completely complimentary, you know, it's just like walking up to the buffet and making yourself a plate, but everything is brought to you at the table. You are served by a waiter like you would be in the main dining room, which I thought was very cool. But I settled that first day. I knew I wanted to get the wings. I love chicken wings and they had really good wings inside the local. So this first day, I got the smoked barbecue wings and they were good. They had really good flavor and I enjoyed that. And then for my main, I got the Wrangler burger and this was very good for a free meal. It was not anything like what I had expected because I was like, this is going to be like a burger like you could get off of, you know, a lot of ships have like a burger place out on the Lido right by the pool. And I thought that's what it was going to be. They were just going to throw some toppings on it and it's like, oh, I could have gotten this outside and not had to wait at all. But this was a fantastic burger. It had really good toppings on it. And I ended up getting this, we'll see this again uh, a few days later in the cruise because it was that good, I had to get it again. One thing I didn't like about the burger and fries was the fries. And uh, I'll give you a word of warning, some of you might not like fish, you might not be able to eat seafood at all. I don't know why a Norwegian would fry up their french fries in the same oil that they've used to fry fish, but they had and it was very evident because the fries tasted of fish. At least that first day, I didn't have that experience any other days, but I thought that was a bit odd and I did want to mention that just to be careful and make sure that you ask them that your fries not be cooked if you you know if you don't like fish or if you can't eat fish make sure you ask them that they cook your fries in a separate batch of oil because uh, those tasted heavily of the fried fish and they do have fried fish and fish sandwich and things like that on the menu so I know exactly what was happening. That night for dinner I had my first specialty dining opportunity like I said took advantage of five. There are so many specialty dining venues on board the Encore more than I've seen on any other cruise ship. I think Overall, I counted seven or eight total specialty dining venues, and I wanted to get to as many of those as I could. Now, Norwegian does offer their free at sea promotion uh, quite a bit, which means you get a specialty dining credit with your booking. It's basically included in the price of the cruise. Uh, so I had one going in. Later on, they asked me if I wanted to upgrade to their free at sea plus, which gave me two additional specialty dinings, bringing my grand total to three. I said, absolutely, I knew I'd want to try them. And then uh, like by the second day of the cruise, after I'd been to specialty dining a night or two, I knew I needed more. So I went and added two more specialty dining credits. Uh, those cost about $99 on board the ship. So if you're wanting to know how much they cost on board the ship versus online before the cruise, it was $99 plus whatever their gratuity charge, 18 or 20%. So it came out to like $120 essentially. So uh, I did get five nights at specialty dining. And the first night of the cruise, I was at Le Bistro. And Le Bistro is the French inspired or French cuisine restaurant there on board the ship. It's actually just under the go-kart track on board. You can actually hear uh, some of the go-karts going over sometimes while you're eating. Uh, but we had really good views out the window because you could look out. We were actually sailing away from Seattle. The food in there was just okay. And I'll walk through exactly what I had. To start, they brought some bread to the table and the bread was just okay. This was my first indication that 
this isn't quite specialty quality of food here in La Bistro. The, the bread was like maybe something you would get off the buffet. It wasn't even main dining room quality. I didn't care for the bread at all. For my starter, I got the beef tartare. And again, that was just okay. It didn't really do anything for me. I thought it could have used more flavor. I've definitely had more flavorful beef tartare on other cruise ships before, so I didn't really care for that. For my salad round, I went for the goat cheese croquette salad, and that was just okay too. Uh, the beets that they have in the salad were the best part, but the croquettes weren't anything special. However, things turned around a little bit with my main entree, and I got the shank and lamb chops, and those were the best part. They were very flavorful, a lot of spice in there, uh, and I really enjoyed that. And then I finished things off with the floating island dessert, and this is like some cream floating in a little bowl, and that was very good. So. The main entree and the dessert were good, however, everything else, uh, it just wasn't specialty dining quality. And also, because I had four other specialty dinings booked, I was kind of like, oh no, are we off on a bad start? Like, are all the other ones going to be this bad too? But uh, things got better, I promise. So on day two of the cruise, I was back at the local for breakfast and very excited to try breakfast at the local, and it was fantastic. I was blown away at the quality. I had some French toast. Uh, with hash browns. And the cool thing about the French toast I had in the local that day was that it had like local breakfast diner or whatever vibes. Like it, it tasted like I just walked down to the corner to my local breakfast place and got French toast. It was very good. The second day of the cruise was a sea day, so they did offer lunch in the main dining room. And y'all, I was blown away by the lunch I had in the main dining room that day. I had heard some rumors and some talk. People had sent me messages on Instagram. Make sure you follow me along on Instagram at Zach the Travel Man. Love to have you over there. I'm always posting about cruising and especially while I'm on these trips. I'm always posting pictures like if I'm sitting at the local eating breakfast, I'm posting a picture right then and you're saying, oh, he's having breakfast at the local. Here's what he thought. So if you want to kind of be more in behind the scenes, make sure you follow me on Instagram. But some people were messaging me before I even went on the cruise after I'd announced I was going on Norwegian. And they were like, we've been on recently and the food has not been great. And that worried me a little bit. I believe the people, I believe whatever ships they were on probably didn't have great food, but I thought that was probably gonna be my experience. I had probably the best lunch I've ever had in the main dining room on a ship. For a starter, I got the bistro salad and this was a really good salad. It had garlic croutons on it. And then for my main, because it was Memorial Day that day, I went for some barbecue and they had St. Louis style barbecue pork. This was so, so, good. I didn't expect much. I had very low expectations because I've gotten the barbecue dishes on other cruise lines before and it's been very meh at best, but this was like two thumbs way up. If you're ever in the main dining room on the Norwegian Encore and you see those ribs and you're like, yeah, I don't know if I should do that. It's barbecue on a cruise ship. You absolutely should do that. That was a really good meal and I'm really glad that I went in there for lunch that day. That night I was back in the main dining room and unlike that lunch, I didn't have the best of experience this evening. First of all, service was very slow in the main dining room. It was pretty much slammed when I got there though. There were tons of people, but service was so slow. It took forever to get my food. I started out with some bread. Of course, they always bring you the bread and the bread was pretty good. It was probably better than that bread I had in La Bistro. And then for my starter, I went with the clam chowder and that was very good clam chowder. It was very good and warm. I also went with a Caesar salad and that was very good as well. I always love a good Caesar salad and they didn't disappoint me. But then with my main, things started to go downhill just a little bit because I opted for the roast beef and it just wasn't great. There wasn't any flavor in the roast beef. By the time it got to the table, it was cold. So it was like eating a cold to lukewarm at best. Uh, like cut of meat and it was just a very thin, very gristly piece of meat. Did not care for that. And then the potatoes that you see there on the plate with it, they were instant, weren't done very well at that. Uh, it, they're very gritty potatoes. I just did not care for the main entree at all. However, my dessert turned things around just a little bit. This was a warm apple strudel and it was very good. It was a huge dessert as you can see there in the clip, uh, but a very good dessert nonetheless. So, uh, yeah, unfortunately the good lunch experience didn't carry over to dinner that day in the main dining room. So on the third day of the cruise, of course, started it off right at the local once again. And on this day, I started off with the fruit plate that they offered. And of course it's fruit. I don't know what else I can say. It was good fruit. But then I opted for the breakfast sandwich. And the breakfast sandwich that they have in there is pretty good, but the bread to filling ratio was off. There was like one little piece of ham, a little thin like deli slice piece of ham. And then this big like brioche bun. 
the brioche bun was fantastic. It all tasted very good, but I was like, maybe they could have put like two or maybe three pieces of ham on there to that big old bun. That would have been a little bit better, but the breakfast sandwich was good nonetheless. And then for lunch, I was back at the local because this happened to be a day where we were gonna be in Juneau and we didn't arrive at Juneau till like 2.30 in the afternoon and I had a long afternoon of excursion. So I was like, I'll eat some lunch before I get off the ship. And it seemed like everyone else probably had that same thought as I did because the service that day was extremely slow. I had to wait to even get a seat and get a table. I had to wait to be called for that. And then once I did get seated and placed my order, it took over 30 minutes to get my order. So just know that sometimes the local can be uh, pretty rushed with people, especially the third day of the cruise. Everyone like me had experienced the local at least once, realized how good it was, and they were all coming back for more. But I started off my meal that day with more chicken wings. These were the sweet chili wings. They were very good. I really enjoyed the flavor of those sweet chili wings. I definitely enjoyed those more than the barbecue wings, but both of them were good. And then I wanted to get a burger and I knew the Wrangler burger was good, but I was like, you know what? I'm gonna try a different burger today. So I opted for the blue cheese burger and this was not great. It was, a, you, you see the clip there, it was a dry patty. And this did taste like something that maybe you'd get up on the buffet or out on the Lido deck. It was a very tough patty. Uh, very little flavor in any of it. I just did not enjoy the burger that day. And then I finished things off with a carrot cake. This was just okay. This is like something you would get off the buffet, which was kind of disappointing because that was one of the items I had seen on the menu before I went on the cruise. So I was really excited to try that carrot cake, but it just didn't live up to the expectations that I had. And I never tried it again the entire cruise. But it was a very cold and a very rainy day in port. And I was tired by the time I got back on the ship, but I had my second specialty dining restaurant waiting for me that night. And this night I was at Cagney's, and Cagney's is the steakhouse on board the ship, and it's popular. If there was a reservation to be had on board the Encore, it was for Cagney's. Everyone was trying to get a reservation for there, and I was glad that I was able to snag one before the cruise. And I will say it wasn't that busy in there that night, I think because we were in Juneau. However, despite that, the service was quite slow. I don't know if they just didn't have enough servers on that night or what. For my starter, I went with the crab cake, and the crab cake was so good and in my notes for the food i wrote that this was the best crab cake yet and by that i mean it's the best crab cake i've ever had on a cruise ship and i get a crab cake just about every cruise so i really enjoyed that crab cake there in cagney's and because it had been such a cold and a rainy day in juno that day i went with the lobster bisque if you've watched my videos my food review videos before from other ships you know that i love a lobster bisque and the one I had at Cagney's was no exception. I loved it, it was very good. It had a lot of flavor to it and several lumps of lobster in there. And then for my main, of course, had to go with a ribeye. However, this ribeye was just eh, okay because the ribeye itself was dry and a little bit tough despite it being medium rare. I don't know if I got like a tough piece of meat or what, but it just wasn't that great and I just really didn't enjoy the ribeye that I had. For dessert, I opted for the caramel butterscotch cheesecake and you look at the picture there, it looks good, it looks really good. However, uh, when you're eating it, the flavor itself, there just wasn't much to it. I didn't really think it was that great. It was no Cheesecake Factory, I'll say that. So if you've had cheesecake at the Cheesecake Factory uh, and you compare it to that, this is gonna come in the loser because it just wasn't that great. And moving on to the next day, day four, of course have to start my day because it was a trend at this point to start my day off at the local. However, this was when, uh, you know, the shine and the glamor of the local was starting to wear off a little bit. And I was starting to see it a little bit more for what it was because this was the most main dining room tasting breakfast that I had had yet. And I get it, like essentially the local is just an extension of the main dining room. It's another main dining room. They're pushing people there for crowd control. There's like over 4,000 people on this ship. So of course they need as many main dining rooms as they can get. That's essentially what the local is. But I guess in my mind, because the first couple of days were so good in the local for breakfast, particularly when I, by the time I got to the fourth day, it was like, oh, this isn't as great today. And that day I ended up getting the American breakfast. This was a uh, buffet-like eggs. You could definitely tell these eggs were sort of the same quality as what you could get up on the buffet. And it also came with some sausage and hash browns, and those were all just okay. Again, it, it felt like I just made my plate myself up on the buffet. That was sort of the quality. It wasn't bad. Uh, it was just lesser of a quality than I had experienced the first two days eating breakfast in the local, and that's sort of what surprised me a bit. I also opted for the buttermilk pancakes, and these were cold when they came out, and you could definitely tell that they were from frozen. These weren't freshly made at all. They were just heated up in a microwave or something, which I get it. That happens a lot when you're mass-producing food, but uh, it was kind of disappointing for me, and it's not something that I would ever get at the local again because of that. Now that night, I was in specialty dining once again, and this time I was at Ocean Blue, and Ocean Blue is a specialty seafood restaurant on board the ship. And this particular day, we happened to be ported in Skagway, a beautiful place, probably my favorite port of the entire cruise. 
and I requested to be sat by the window and just look at the view I had while we were sailing away from Skagway. We were actually turning around. You could see all the way down the fjord and I was really happy to be dining at Ocean Blue and be able to enjoy such a beautiful sail away while I enjoyed some tremendous food. I started the food off with the bread that they give you and they bring this very buttery bread to the table. It just fell apart. It was just so well seasoned. It was almost like a very buttery King's Hawaiian roll if you've ever had one of those. It's a very sweet bread. Uh, and just dipping that in the butter. Oh, that was so good. That was the best bread by far that I had all trip. For my starters, I went with the scallops and these were amazing. These are actually served on pork belly and they had a sweet glaze poured over the top of them. So it was sort of like getting scallops and pork belly and what a treat this was. This was definitely the best starter I had all trip. So things are off to a great start there in Ocean Blue. I also enjoyed some clam chowder and this was excellent. Again, it was another very cold day in port. I had taken the White Pass Rail all the way up to White Pass Summit and then back down. So a good bowl of clam chowder was just what I needed and this was really good. However, things started to fall apart a little bit at the main entree. I was off to such a good start and I was like, what do I want to get? They had so many good options for the entree and I think I just chose the wrong thing because I went with the fisherman's platter and with the fisherman's platter, you can get that either grilled or fried and it had been a long time since I had like good fried fish and fried shrimp. Thinking about like, Red Lobster. I used to love to eat at Red Lobster. They had like a fisherman's platter. So I was thinking about sort of that quality of like fried seafood, right? But that is not what I got. They brought this plate and sat it down and you could tell they had just taken their regular like grilled fish, put it in like pancake batter or like funnel cake batter or something like that. And that batter had just like ballooned over the seafood and it was just a mess. It was greasy and kind of wet and I just did not enjoy that. I actually just sat my plate aside, sort of took some of the breading off some of the pieces of seafood and just ate that. My server actually came by and remarked, he was like, oh, you must not have liked it. And I was like, it's not great, you know? So that was kind of disappointing, but I probably should have picked something different. It was really more akin to something you would get at like Long John Silver's or somewhere like that. And those fries that came with it, you know, you're in a specialty dining restaurant, you think, oh, there'll be a different cut of fries. They're coming from a more premium frozen bag than the ones you're gonna get like in the local or the main dining room or somewhere. Not true. Those fries are the very same fries that they had at the local, I know for certain. So not the best entree that I've had and I definitely would never get that again, but I would go back to Ocean Blue, that's for sure. For dessert at Ocean Blue, I went with the apple tart and that was just okay. It was nothing spectacular. Again, it was something like you would get in the main dining room. So now we're on day five of the cruise and this was actually the day we were sailing in Glacier Bay in the morning. So I actually didn't really eat anything for breakfast. By lunchtime, you know where I was headed. I was back to the local because I knew I had to get uh, more of those wings and another burger and this time I got the sweet chili wings again, and then I got the Wrangler burger because I knew those were trusty go-tos and I really enjoyed both of those that day. So if you're going to the local, get the Wrangler burger because that is really good. Stay away from that blue cheese mess because that, that wasn't very good, but the Wrangler burger is where it's at and I promise you'll be very happy if you get those wings. That night I was back at Specialty Dining and this night was at Los Lobos and Los Lobos is the Mexican restaurant on board the Encore and I was very excited when I was planning my cruise to see that they even had a Mexican restaurant, a specialty Mexican restaurant, because you don't normally see that on cruise ships. Uh, but I'm really glad that they had it on this ship and I was really excited to try it. And I will say this ended up being probably my favorite specialty dining experience of the entire cruise. I really enjoyed Los Lobos. I started things off with the seafood ceviche and this was a very small appetizer. This was probably the most disappointing appetizer, not because of the taste or anything. It was just small and there wasn't a lot to it. And uh, I kind of had a little bit of like buyer's remorse, so to speak, because I happened to see a table near me. They got the quesadillas for their appetizer and those things were huge. They looked really good. And I was like, I wish I'd gotten the quesadillas instead of the ceviche. Ceviche was good. There was nothing wrong with it. It just wasn't a lot to it. For my main, I went with the carne asada and y'all, that was tremendous. It was so tender. It was so flavorful. There was so much of it. I really enjoyed that. For my sides, I opted for the plantains. Those are very good. And then I also got the street corn and the street corn was fantastic. It was corn on the cob, uh, but the way that they had seasoned it with the street corn seasonings, it was fantastic. I would have, I could have eaten there three or four more times just to get that corn because it was one of the best things I ate all cruise. And then for dessert, I had one of my favorite desserts, the tres leches. And I always have to be careful when I order a tres leches, even at home when I order at like local Mexican restaurants. It's not always great, but it was fantastic. 
in Los Lobos. It was so creamy and delicious. I loved it. Day six, we had a very early day in Ketchikan and we left at like one in the afternoon. So when I got back on board the ship, I knew I wanted to go to the main dining room and get me a good sit down lunch. And it didn't disappoint. They have really good lunches in the main dining room. Now, the first thing I noticed when I sat down and they gave me the menu was that the menu was identical to the menu that I had on the second day of the cruise, the very first time I went for lunch in the main dining room. So just know that. They do seem to use uh, the same menus probably for lunch in the main dining room, no matter what day of the cruise you go. They might change a thing or two, probably a dish or two here or there, but for the most part, it's largely the same. And I started this lunch off with the Bay Scallop Scrotton, and this was so amazingly good. I couldn't believe how good this was. I also went with the bistro salad again because I had enjoyed it so much the first lunch I had in the main dining room. And again, it did not disappoint. For my main entree for lunch that day in the main dining room, I had the Monte Cristo sandwich. And this was very, very good. I love a good Monte Cristo sandwich. I don't have them too often, but when I do, I always expect them to be a treat. And boy, this was a treat. I really enjoyed it. Couldn't believe that I was having it in a main dining room on board a Norwegian cruise ship when so many people had told me that the food wasn't that great on the cruise ship. It was tremendous. And then for my dessert, it, I was even more impressed. It was like things just kept getting better that lunch. And I had the molten lava cake. And this was a tremendous dessert. It could have been a specialty dining uh, restaurant dessert. And actually it should have been because some of the desserts I had in specialty dining weren't as good as this molten lava cake. That night for dinner, I was back for my final specialty dinner of the entire cruise. And this time I was going to go to the Q Smokehouse. And as the name suggests, the Q Smokehouse is the barbecue restaurant, the specialty barbecue restaurant. Barbecue on a cruise ship sometimes gives me pause because I know a lot of cruise lines try it. Some other cruise lines even have specialty barbecue restaurants, but the barbecue I've had in those hasn't been that great. However, the barbecue in Q Smokehouse was tremendous. I couldn't believe it. The whole meal, everything I ate in there, I was like, I can't believe this is happening right now. The vibe and the atmosphere in Q Smokehouse is very fun. It's not as like high class as some of the other specialty dining venues are. So you can dress down a little bit in there. They actually had uh, the house band was on stage. They were singing like country western songs. And then about 10 minutes after I got in there, they took a little break. And then for the rest of the time I was in there, it was actually ABBA night. So they were playing ABBA hits. And they did really good. It was a really good vibe, a really good atmosphere for my dinner. The service I had at Q Smokehouse that night was some of the best I had the entire cruise. I really enjoyed my server. I started off everything with the Texan crab cake. And these were good crab cakes, but I'm not sure what made them Texan other than they were served with some pimento sauce. Other than that, they tasted pretty much like every other crab cake I've ever had, but it was good nonetheless. And then for my main, I had probably the best main entree I had the entire cruise because I had the Pitmaster platter, and y'all, you better come ready to eat. Don't eat anything else on board the ship that entire day if you were gonna order the Pitmaster platter at Q Smokehouse, because it is a lot of food. There was like three or four different types of meat. There was like smoked chicken, there was brisket, there was sausage, there was pulled pork. I had a loaded baked potato as a side that had pulled pork in it. I had potato salad, and pickles, and cornbread, and mac and cheese. That was a feast, y'all. I didn't even finish everything. I mean, I don't know how three people could eat that and, and finish everything, but it was a really good meal. I just took my time, enjoyed the music, enjoyed the atmosphere. And in fact, it was so good in my notes here that I took, and I take my notes from the food right as I'm eating it or shortly after, I put, this was on a cruise ship in all caps and like 15 question marks because I just couldn't believe that that quality of barbecue was on a cruise ship. So make sure you eat at Q Smokehouse for dinner if you're on Norwegian Encore. And for dessert, I went with a peach cobbler, another favorite of mine that I haven't had in a long time. And this was good. It was more of a cake consistency, a little bit different than the peach cobblers that I'm used to having, but it was still good. And what better way to end a barbecue dinner than with some peach cobbler? It was fantastic meal at Q Smokehouse. Can't recommend that enough. And now we come to the seventh day of the cruise, which was the final day of the cruise. It was a sea day. And so I went to the main dining room for more lunch because the lunches had been tremendous. And I started off with the shrimp fritters. These were very good. There just wasn't a lot to them. As you can see in the clip, there was just a few of them. However, it was very good. Came with some little sauce to dip in and I enjoyed that. And then for my main, I went with the fish tacos and those were pretty good as well. So again, the lunches in the main dining room on board Norwegian Encore are very good. That night I was back in the main dining room for my second main dining room dinner of the cruise. And this time I was in the Manhattan room and I started off 
with the scallops, which were good. And then for a salad, I got the Caesar salad because if you know me, I love a Caesar salad. I always order Caesar salads on cruises and it was good. Nothing impressive, but it was a decent Caesar salad. And then for my main, I went with the sirloin and this was just okay. It was similar to the roast beef that I had had that second night in the main dining room, but a little bit better. But again, I will remark and say, are all the fries on board the Norwegian Encore the same? Because I swear, whether I was in the local or the main dining room or the specialty restaurants, all the fries were the same. Can y'all not mix it up a little bit and get some variety in the French fries that you have on board the ship to just like step it up, class it up just a little bit? Because everywhere I went, it was these same little shoestring fries. And it was like, I had those in the local. I saw those up in the buffet. I had those here. I had those there. So... Let's get some different fries. So those were all the meals that I had on board the Norwegian Encore. It was a lot of food, but they had very good food on board the ship. Like I said, I was surprised because I'd heard so many negative comments about food on Norwegian, and I just didn't know what to expect because it was my first Norwegian cruise, but I enjoyed everything. I also ate several times up in the observation lounge. Up in the observation lounge, they have lighter fare. You know, they have more snack things. I would go up there some mornings. They had the little boxes of like frosted flakes and some milk. I would go up there and get cereal some mornings. I would go up there some days and check out what cakes they might have because they often had desserts in the afternoon. I had a tremendous piece of Tres Leches cake in there one day and that was very good. But pretty much any food you want, you're gonna find it in some form or another on board the Norwegian Encore. I highly recommend you take a trip on the Norwegian Encore just for the food alone because that's how good it was. Thank you so much for watching this video. I hope you found it informative. If you did, please go down below, give me a thumbs up. Also, consider subscribing to the channel if you're not already, as I do have lots more cruising content on the way. Thank you again for watching, and I'll see you on the next adventure.